Hey everybody, what's going on? Josh here with Scrapyard Films, and they just released Vegas Pro 19, and I'm going to show you the upgrades to the color grading section that they did, and how much better it is. So to start this off, they have a really nice UI upgrade. They changed the actual look of the wheels, and for the gamma and gain, they actually changed the colors specifically to scientifically accurate colors as well. There's a lot of extremely deep detailed reasoning on why they did that, but that's way too much for me to go into right now. I'm just gonna show you the overview of this color grading panel. So not only did they change the color wheels and the look of those, they actually changed a bunch of icons as well. Another cool thing they added is for the RGB curves right here, you can actually drag the window bigger and it splits them all up between the Y RGB curves individually. And it makes it way easier to adjust each one of these channels. Next, they added manufacturer-created built-in camera LUTs to the input LUT tab. So if we select the input LUT tab, we'll now see a LUT drop-down menu. And we select that, we'll see a bunch of different brands of LUTs like Blackmagic, we got Canon, DJI Drones, Nikon, Sony, Panasonic, and even RED. But don't worry, they did not take away the ability to browse for your own custom LUTs, you can do that as well still. And now you may notice that you don't see a Color Corrections tab anymore but instead they replaced it with RL Color Wheel, which we'll go into here in a second. So they didn't get rid of color channels, they actually moved the color channels to their own little icons on each one of these sections of the color wheels. So if you wanted to toggle the color channels, you just select this little icon, and it changes from the wheel to the individual RGB Y channels. They also added two more buttons, one on lift and one on gain, and the one on lift allows you to specify a black point in your video, which will do its best to compensate the luminance level and adjust any RGB automatically as necessary. Sometimes it doesn't work out the best, but it's still there just in case you need it. And then over here on gain, they have a specified white point, which does the same thing, but for the widest value. So you choose the brightest, widest part of your screen, and it's going to automatically adjust the luminance levels and some RGB tweaks to try to get the white balance correct. Another neat thing about these color wheels is that they added when you drag the circle from the center away, it's going to show you what color you're landing on by a connecting line from the circle to the center of your wheel. The closer your circle is to the center of the wheel, the less saturated that line is, and the closer your circle is to the outer part of the wheel, the most saturated your line is. Now let's go ahead and select RL color wheels. This is probably one of the most impressive features they added to the color grading panel itself because this allows for extremely precise and deep correction for specific areas of video in particular. You can see on the left hand side here it has adjustable limits for how you're going to differentiate the shadows, midtones, and highlights of your video. You can raise and lower those and that's going to affect the shadow and highlight points of your video for your adjustments. So by default, you can see them on the waveform as little blue lines right there, but you can turn that off right here with this little button as well if you don't want to see them. So in case you're confused, let me show you exactly what these do. I'm going to drag and drop a color gradient from white to black here. So my lowest limit is 25, and that's setting the point of where my shadows meet the midtones. So if I drag my shadows brighter and darker, you'll see that it's going to be only pivoting at that point that I set for my lower limit. Now I can still adjust this limit up and down and all the results will move accordingly. So now we go to the highlights and do the same thing. And then when we adjust the midtones, that's going to be everything in between the range that we set. Now one thing I'm noticing that I hope they change in the future is that right there where the limits are, the pivot point is an extremely sharp pivot point. It has no real roll off. It's more of just an extremely sharp change. So if they can add some feathering to that, maybe give us some Bezier roll off or whatnot, if you can adjust that, that'd be fantastic. Because it would make for a much smoother transition when you're adjusting your shadows or highlights. And another cool thing that they added is the ability to quickly add Bezier masking and motion tracking from inside the color grading panel. If you go over to the right hand side and go to the effects, you can click the drop down and you'll see Bezier masking. Go ahead and select it, and it adds Bezier masking to your event chain. If you select Bezier masking, if you drop down the general options, you'll see the regular options, but a brand new motion tracking button that was added. Basically, once you're done customizing your mask, you can select this motion tracking button and it'll automatically add it to the motion tracking panel, which saves a lot of time. So let's go ahead and adjust the mask. We drop down the mask one right here. And what I want to do is track this bricked rectangle area. Should be a pretty easy track. I can go down to type and I'm going to actually go to curve, which is the drawing mask type. So this is where I select the points. I'm going to select the top left of this brick, bottom left, bottom right, top right, and connect it back to the first point. And that is the shape I want to track. And I want to keep that shape of the brick this whole time. 
So once you're done, uncheck the edit mode right here. And then we're going to go to motion tracking. And it's going to add this bezier mask into our motion tracking panel. Precision, I want to keep that on accurate. Mode, I want to change that to perspective. And once you're done, I'm going to go ahead and hit track forward. All right, once we're done, let's scrub through and see what it looks like. Goes from the beginning all the way down there. Oh man, look at that perfect track. Awesome. So I can go back to Bezier Masking and then change the blend all the way to zero. And then I can change this scene however I want. Let's say let's make this a little bit you know, purple or something like that. Then I go out of Color Grading, Alt-G. I can take this track and right click and then duplicate it. Take this bottom track, go to the effects and remove everything. Color Grading, Bezier Masking, all that. And now we have a simple tracked and graded video. But that's going to wrap it up for the general overview of the new color grading panel. If this video helped you out, be sure to shoot a like and subscribe because that'll help me out. I'll see you guys in the next video. And I want to give a special shout out to all my legendary scrappers at the top, LMC and Hardy Cash. You can find links to their channels and social media in the description below. And thanks to all my super scrappers there in the middle and my awesome scrappers at the bottom.